Hello folks, and welcome to the HS Tech channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at a program that is pretty much almost completely extinct. As a matter of fact, it is extinct. Only its successors live on. Office Vision VM was said to be, at some point in history, the most displayed program on any terminal screen of all time. However, it was quickly killed when IBM acquired the Lotus Corporation, as they said that Lotus Notes would be a worthy successor. Some would argue it wasn't. Let's see if they're right. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually uh, use this. Now, I'm currently sitting at a plain login screen on an SNA gateway, so I need to punch in the system name I want to connect to. We'll go ahead and look at the uh, VMESA 2.4 system I have that has Opsvision VM installed on it. We'll go ahead and log in, and we're ready to go. This is just plain old VM CMS. Now this video isn't really a tutorial on how to use VM. This is uh, mainly to look at Office Vision. This will assume at least some VM knowledge for some of the things I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and run it. So we get our fancy logo screen. Just hit enter. And we get our main menu. And this is the famous main menu. <laughs> if you look at any old uh, video of like a IBM shop, yeah, you'll see it. That means a company that's using IBM products, by the way. Let's go ahead and process our calendars. This is the main useful feature of Office Vision, although it has many useful features, we'll get into them. We have two. Because this is a fully loaded install, we also have the elusive enhanced calendar. This was not part of base Office Vision. Normally you'd only get the ESA calendar. Let's take a look at them both. So here's what we get. So we can go ahead and work with today's schedule. We can look at the entire week's schedule. We can manage conference room schedule and a few other things. Let's go ahead and work with today's schedule. Now well, here we are. Well, looks like I'm right on time. I'm still on schedule. Perfect. I'll go ahead and add something I need to do later. Uh, let's say, I don't know, go for a walk. Yeah, if I can get this keyboard to type, there's a microphone in the way. And then from here we can view seven days of the calendar and look at that. Now if I go to the previous day, or I guess you could say the day set, we can rapidly flip through that. But there's nothing there from yesterday's calendar, I don't believe. Aha, there we go. From here, we can view seven days of the calendar, and we'll get multiple days worth of stuff. From here, you can also view the month. Oh. And this is also a clickable dialogue, so to speak. Eh. Apparently it doesn't want to click. And yes, there is main menu number two. This will allow you to control who can access your calendar. And if you type in another user's username, they'll be able to overwrite your calendar entries. And you can see who can and can't see your calendar. Now, right now I've got it configured such that all users cannot see your calendar. Let's, oops, uh, went too far. Let's take a look at that enhanced calendar. Now this no longer uses function keys, this uses numbers, but it's exactly the same thing, except you can actually see where you can type now. We get the exact same stuff. And you can see how that sort of works there. We can view the month, except this time, these are hot links. You can actually hit them, and believe it or not, they actually work. And we can view the six-month calendar as well, which is really, really useful. Just a calendar display to look at. The standard calendar doesn't have something this useful. All right, so one of the things that Office Vision was probably more famous for than the calendar system was, of course, the infamous email system. As it started out as Profs, the professional office system, it was mainly sold as an email product. So let's see how that lives up to its name. Oh, uh, look at that. Oh, uh, looks like I missed a meeting. Oh boy. You better see what I missed. Hmm, literally nothing. Looks like I'm good. But this is what a received email can look like. And this is just another one. And uh, you may be a clever VM user or not, but we're going to see what that last line there means in a second. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We'll come back to the phone directory. We're going to send a note to myself. It's 
space it out real good. Okay, and I think that will do it. So we'll go ahead and F6. And then the next time I hit enter, we'll get the notification that a mail has been received. Boom, there it is. This is now sitting in my, well, it's literally sitting in the card reader. It is not readable by the CMS note command though. Now, let's see what we got. There it is, so it highlights it in white. And we hit enter, there it is. From here you can route it. To forward it, we'll route it to ourself. And then we'll go ahead and send it. Note was sent, there we go. And then when I reopen the mailbox, <laughs> there it is, a forward of a forward. Yes, this is where that came from. Let's keep processing notes and messages. We'll send ourselves a message. Now this is just the equivalent of the VM tell command. There we go. And we can also view the note log, which is pretty much all the notes that you've sent. And we can change a couple settings. Uh, by the way, this right here is an ISPF dialog. You can generally tell the difference between the Office Vision dialogs that use ISPF and the dialogs that use iOS 3270. This one obviously uses iOS 3270. Okay, let's come back and look at that phone directory. Now this is a lost program called Callout VM, and if we do about, you'll be able to see that. Callout version 3. Well, release 3 is technically version 1 release 3. IBM's naming is kind of weird, but there isn't too much we can do here because I don't actually have myself in here. But it's a pretty useful directory service, so to speak. All right, let's process some documents. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the fully functional install here. Uh, unfortunately, I did win Office Vision Malfunction Bingo, and uh, I do not actually have Display Right 370. I only have Script VS. But uh, thank goodness I've got that because Office Vision is pretty much nigh unusable without Script. So let's go ahead and prepare a document. Now we want to prepare it using a not standard document style because the standard one is RFT. RFT, that's a display write file, and we don't have display write. So we'll just do a uh, memo to distribution. Author profile name. Now, when you go through the Office Vision setup procedure, you need to define an office or an author profile on the Office Vision settings dialog. It's not hard to do. You can do it really easily. Okay, and then we can scroll down to the bottom with the next part and start typing. Alright, I think we'll be good to go there. And we are now done entering. Now when we hit F12, this will be the... Uh, pretty much the uh, get rid of it menu. So you can view the document. Yeah, you can view the document. Awesome. We can change the document. That just evokes the editor. We can assign it a document number. We won't do that for now. And we can proofread the document. Now the proofreading is really fun because it will check the spelling for you. Uh, it looks like IBM doesn't know how to spell their own products. Uh, yeah, let's try some more proofreading and we will check the paraphrasing within a sentence. I've not quite figured out how to use this, but we'll just assume that it is working fine. And then we can do probably the more interesting feature. We can check the reading comprehension level. <laughs> now this one's pretty neat. Because it will tell you if uh, something is uh, too big of a word for someone at a reading level. Apparently they think custom is for fifth grade reading level. Uh, <laughs> don't know where they got that one from. But of course, if you put it on the maximum grade level, grade level 16, let's so you got your PhD in English here, you can understand literally anything in this note. Thank goodness. From here, we can file it as a final document, or we can file it as a personal storage document. Now, we're going to file it as a personal storage document because we're going to take a brief excursion from Office Vision to learn how to actually read a Office Vision document without having Office Vision. Okay, so what that does is it writes it to your mini disk. So we'll go ahead and get off of Office Vision and we'll see what we've got. You can see this one script file, and if I type it, you'll see 
pretty standard what you'd expect. Now, fortunately, I have script installed, but it requires a uh, profile in order to be used. And you'll see it right there, OFSMProf. So if we do script one, which is the file name, profile, we'll get it. So we hit clear here, and then we'll see our formatted document. And if you redirect this to a PostScript printer, you'll get a really good looking output. Okay, now we'll go back to processing documents, and from here we can actually import the document into the Office Vision storage. So let's do that. Okay, and we'll add it that we do want to make changes. And enter. Do you want to erase the document from your personal storage? That removes it from your mini disk. From here, we can add it or change it. Now nah, we won't do that. We'll actually view the document log. And from here we can view the document log information or we can just view the whole thing. Here it is. That's it right there. Now you may notice that it does actually eat line returns. That is a uh, known problem. Hmm, it's good enough. I think it'll work. Perfect. Now from here, we can prompt it, and we can route it. Oh, yeah, okay, we'll uh, not attach a routing slit. Okay, so what that does is it basically mails the document off. Now if we go back and we uh, open our mail, there it is. All this does is pipe it through script and throw it into a mail and send it. And we'll take a look at some more advanced mail stuff in a future video with SMTP and all of that. Let's keep processing some documents. So you may wonder how do you actually remove a document. Well, you process the document log, you view the whole thing, and you can just prompt, and you can discard. Won't be needing that, so we will leave the document log, and items will be discarded. Okay, now selecting documents for stapling. This one's pretty interesting. But I'm not going to go through this one now, but pay close attention to that number at the top left and the difference in the dialogue style. We'll get back to this in a second. And you can process your author profile. And this is important. I said you'd have to do this, and you must do it. So we'll go ahead and look at our own author profile. This is what you do. When you add a author profile, it will prompt you for all of this. Okay, let's keep looking. So we have an automatic reminder. We'll go ahead and set an automatic reminder for 6.33, and we'll go ahead and punch in some text. All right, and go ahead and strike return. Boom, automatic reminder has been set, and in about a minute or so, we should see it. Ah, oh, and I just missed it. Did you see the clock change right as I did that? But it shows up in this region right here, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. We'll add another reminder, except this time we'll actually be able to see this one. Alright, now we can uh, look at what else we have in the meantime. Now we can change a couple settings here. Now, the nicknames file, this is pretty useful. We'll process our own nicknames file, and this is actually a full dialog for the uh, VM nicknames system. You can process an author profile. There's that dialog again. A distribution list file. This is pretty much your mailing list file. Taylor note processing. This is what you use to change your function keys with. It's a little bit tricky. Um, this dialog is not very intuitive. You will definitely want to read the manual here. <laughs> And we can, of course, tailor some calendar processing. We can change the time zone, and there's a few other things we can change as well. Like, what does not constitute a weekend? Uh, you can, of course, say Wednesday is a weekend if you are so inclined. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I probably should mention that too. You can change what time work does and doesn't run at. Uh, and it will automatically wrap it. So if you put in something at 5 o'clock, it's going to be 5 o'clock p.m., not 5 o'clock a.m if you don't specify 24 hour time. We can eliminate the logo and the confirmation display, but we're gonna leave that there for now. Okay, I'm still not getting a reminder. I guess the reminder's just broken. 
Well, we'll look at the way dialog instead. You may have noticed that up at the top left of the screen. That was a shared file system path. Yes, this is running out of a file pool. Okay, well, I don't want to mark myself as a way because that's going to pretty much break my Office Vision profile. But you can set this up and it will forward off your mails automatically. Now, I mentioned there's another dialog that looks a little different. Here it is. Yes, in fact, there are actually two Office Vision dialog sets. So let's take a look at what we have on personal services. Oh, uh, the Office Vision 400 users out there might actually recognize this. This is supposed to be relatively similar to Office Vision 400. Whether or not it actually is is up for debate. I think it's about a 5 out of 10. Okay, well, here we are. We get our schedule, which just invokes the lame, crappy Office Vision calendar, not the fancy one. You can edit all of that if you want, though. We can open our mail. There's our mail. We can send a note. I don't need to send a note to anybody. We can process some calendars. That's literally just the root dialog for the schedule, as you see there. The mail menu. This is pretty much the more advanced version of that. Um, oh, yeah, you can allow other users to access your mailbox, and the sysadmin user has full control over all user mailboxes. So don't think you can delete mails, because you can remove deleted mails from the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's actually a system-wide mail log file. Okay, phone directory. Unfortunately, that is supposed to call out call up. Yeah, like the program call up that you saw a couple seconds ago, but uh, what we have in that one around here. Decision support. Sorry, Office Vision can't support all of your bad decisions. All right, let's take a look at our documents. Now, this is literally the exact same document dialog thing. This fine dialog might actually be the worst user interface I've ever seen. I mean... That is more dashes than someone that doesn't know how to transmit Morse code. So we're just going to disregard that. But the view thing is pretty much every document that you've got. And this right here is pretty much the exact same thing I did earlier. But yeah. Nickname editing, same thing that we saw there. Files. This allows us to import files and all that stuff. You can store any file as an Office Efficient document. And then, of course, you can attach to an email. This is what you use to attach to an email, but it's really clunky and user interface is bad. You can change your password, which actually works, by the way. And yes, this is a Dermate dialog because the message prefix is DVH. All files, this just invokes file list. Also, the keen user might know that Office Vision has some knack for mixed case file names. This sucks. This dollar sign or mine thing that's all lowercase, good luck typing that in. Uh, fortunately, you can peek it. Ugh. See, you can't even peek it. Yeah, you can't really do much with mixed case file names on VM. Once you've got them, you're pretty much stuck with them. And we do, of course, have a calculator. Works like a charm. And it is, in fact, capable of handling large numbers. Local applications. And this is something that you would customize. A lot of Office Vision shops that may have been cross system would put an entry for VM pass through in here, also called PVM, something else I need to make a video for. And of course, the infamous database access that I don't have. That's a dialog for SQL data system. It would be uh, basically a front end to iSQL. But I think that's going to probably wrap it up for now. That's pretty much Office Vision. That is just about everything that a user can do on Office Vision. Now, adding a user is relatively simple, but in the next video, we're going to take a look at some more advanced Office Vision operation.